Now at six, a man at the center of a hit and run turns himself in what neighbors say happened. Plus, neighbors of an accused serial rapist speak out what they have to say about the suspect, their reaction. And we now know the results of an investigation into an officer involved shooting in Riverton. Whether or not the officer involved will face consequences. Live from Utah's first TV station, ABC 4 News at 6 starts now. Good evening. Glenn Mills has the night off. Thank you for joining us here at ABC 4 News. We begin tonight with the driver in a hit and run involving an eight year old boy in Salt Lake City. We've been told he's turned himself in. Now, this is a story ABC 4 has been following since it all happened. And now, for the first time, we're seeing the surveillance video of the incident. ABC 4's Nicole Newman reports. We want to warn you what you're about to see is difficult to watch. An eight year old Salt Lake City boy playing ball in a neighborhood in the area of 1500 South and 1300 West when a red pickup truck plows into him. It just really shocked me and it just made me want to cry. Alana Reed lives in the neighborhood. She captured the accident on her surveillance camera. When the neighbor called me and told me that he had gotten hit, he says, Can you look up on the camera and see if you have any videos of it? What the video shows is the child seemingly stunned from the impact, immediately gets back up after being knocked to the ground by the vehicle, and then runs away. I think he didn't even realize that he'd been hit, the way he got up and moved. The driver does get out and appears to talk to the boy, but later leaves. Salt Lake City Police say the driver has since turned himself in. Reed, a school crossing guard, has this advice for drivers. Please go slow, especially in the neighborhood, especially at school crossing. You could hit a child, and, and how would that make you feel? I mean, really, come on. Let's slow down around the neighborhoods and school crossings. In Salt Lake City, Nicole Newman, ABC4 News. Thank you, Nicole. Well, one person is dead and another seriously injured after a car crash in Hanksville this morning. Utah Highway Patrol saying the blue Volkswagen nearly came to a stop on SR24 when the black Dodge you see in the picture crashed into them, the VW rolling. Now, the driver of the VW from Australia was killed, his wife seriously hurt. The two people in the Dodge were from Australia and Switzerland. They had minor injuries. Now, it took investigators more than 20 years to link an Ogden man to a string of violent crimes. Clearfield police say Mark Burns is connected to several sexual assaults in Utah and Wyoming. They say it took so long to track Burns down because his DNA was not in a national registry. A DNA sample from Burns' half-brother led them to Mark. He's now been arrested on suspicion of aggravated sexual assault and robbery. His neighbors in this quiet Ogden neighborhood say they're in shock tonight. He needs to be held accountable. The victims, the victims I feel sorry for. Utah law enforcement says Burns could be connected to several other assaults throughout the western part of the U.S. The Salt Lake County District Attorney rules that the deadly force police used in an incident in Riverton last year was all justified. Police shot and killed Jason Whittle last October at his mother's house. According to the DA, Whittle threatened his mother with a butter knife and she called the police. When police arrived, they say Whittle grabbed her and held the knife to her throat and threatened to kill her. That's when police say one officer fired a shot, killing Whittle. Now, this is a video that's gone viral. It shows a restaurant owner holding a fire extinguisher and spraying a man smoking a cigarette in the face. Now, that man is taking legal action. John Bird saying he was volunteering near the Gallivan Plaza on Friday when a restaurant owner, here's the video now, a restaurant owner got angry and sprayed him in the face with a fire extinguisher. Here it is again. Well, Bird says he was a myriad of symptoms and is filing a claim for civil assault and battery. Well, police in Moab are asking for the public's help to catch a flag napper. Police saying someone cut down the pride flag hanging at the Moab Arts and Recreation Center. They are asking anyone who has information or if you saw anything, call the number you see there on the bottom of your screen. Now, with lower temperatures and higher humidity throughout southern Utah, fire managers recently lifted restrictions, yes, but they want to send a clear message tonight. Wildfire season is still not over just yet. ABC4's Katie Corrales reports. 
Well, fire officials in southern Utah said they were expecting one of the worst wildfire seasons in more than a decade after such a wet winter and spring. And although the recent neck fire torched nearly 20,000 acres, they say overall it's been a fairly average season. With extreme fuel conditions and grasses much taller than normal, fire managers said any blazes this year had the potential to be catastrophic. We're expecting uh, bigger fires, uh, more frequent fires. Crews say over the last five years, they've seen a long term trend of drought. And with that, about 300 fires typically ignite from May through October. And in 2019, they say they're on track. Wildfire risk is definitely at the forefront of everybody's minds. Firefighters said about 60% of wildfires this year have been human caused, with many abandoned campfires, illegal fireworks, and trailer chains sparking flames. I definitely saw a higher level of awareness this year, which is great. Um, we need all the help we can get preventing those human caused fires. Overall, officials said the monsoon pattern hasn't been typical, leading to a much lower number of lightning caused ignitions. In fact, the St. George area has gone 102 days without measurable precipitation. We've definitely still got some conditions that would be uh, conducive to a large fire, um, especially with the wind that, that is forecast. We're not out of the woods. We need to be careful. Reporting in Cedar City, Katie Corrales, ABC4 News. Thank you, Katie. Well, tracking Utah wildfires, we're keeping an eye on a wildfire burning near Richfield. Now, the Helpers Fire is what it's called. It's burning about five miles east of town. So far, it's burned 397 acres. Firefighters are concerned about two buildings and a nearby communications tower, they say. Now, that fire is currently 50% contained. Crews are scrambling to get a fire in the Grand Canyon under control today. Helicopters are dropping water on the wildfire burning in the north rim of the Grand Canyon. Officials say the fire is 17 square miles and started back on July 25th by lightning. It's become more active recently due to the high winds. And still, the north rim's main visitors' facilities are open despite visible smoke in that area. Okay, now for a look at the weather. We have storms rolling in this weekend. Dan Pope standing by and tracking it all. Hey, Dan. Hey, and you know, with storms, you have wind. And today, the winds picked up a little bit. They're not high winds, but they are blustery. And they are going to become high winds tomorrow, especially here from Juab County through Millard County, Beaver County, and into parts of Iron County, even the northern sections of Washington County. Elsewhere, we have well, we call these brown areas wind advisories. So how much wind will come with the high winds? Well, typically 40 to 50 mile per hour sustained winds gusts over 60 miles per hour. But in those areas where the winds are in the wind advisory category, and I think personally, even in the Salt Lake Valley, Tooele Valley areas, 30 to 40 mile per hour winds with gusts to 50 miles per hour, very, very likely. It's all because of this upper level low coming in, and it's got some cold air, it also has a lot of wind, and it has some thunder showers associated with it. We'll pinpoint exactly who'll get hit the hardest coming up in my full weather forecast in just a little bit. Back to you, Emily. All right, thank you, Dan. Well, a live look from tonight from Washington, D.C., where the whistleblower complaint has the Capitol still reeling from the impeachment inquiry into President Trump. As lawmakers prepare for their next recess, White House officials appeared to have confirmed a key detail in that complaint, centered around efforts to keep hidden details of the call the president had with the leader of Ukraine. This appears to be the first intelligence community whistleblower complaint that has ever, ever uh, been withheld from Congress. It is, in fact, as far as I'm concerned, unprecedented. According to transcripts of the call, the president repeatedly urged the Ukrainian leader to investigate his potential 2020 rival, Joe Biden, and his son. With the whistleblower saying White House officials were deeply disturbed by the call, raising concerns that they had witnessed the president abuse his office for personal gain. Now, the House Intel Committee plans to continue their investigation through the congressional recess. Meanwhile, in New York, actor Jason Momoa joined United Nations Secretary General Antonio Guterres. Gutierrez, excuse me, and leaders from the small island states at an event urging action to address the impact of climate change on these countries. Momoa warned, saying in part, quote, to cause irreversible damage to the earth is to bring the same unto ourselves. And also speaking of the U.N., was Bahamian Prime Minister urging people to come and visit their other islands unaffected by Hurricane Dorian? To potential travelers from throughout the world. 
please come and visit one or more of the 14 other major islands in the Bahamas not affected by Hurricane Dorian, including Nassau in the island of New Providence. And kind welcome there. Well, portions of the island nation were nearly wiped off the map after being hit by the catastrophic Category 5 hurricane last month. Well, a Houston, Texas sheriff's deputy is dead tonight after being shot in the head during a traffic stop. Investigators say there were two people in the car. One of them got out of the car and shot the deputy at least twice in the back of the head before taking off running. The shooter was later arrested in a nearby ice cream shop. Now, the deputy was a 10 year veteran of the department. And in Oregon, a man is in custody after firing a gun during a struggle with an officer at the Portland International Airport. Now, this happened this morning near the baggage claim. And according to police, the man was hurt during the struggle but is expected to be okay. No one else was hurt. Well, still ahead, four schools in Utah have made a national list of the best schools in the country. Which ones made the grade? We'll tell you just ahead. We also have a list of the best states in the country for teachers to work, where Utah falls on that list. And we are in a partly to occasionally mostly cloudy period this evening. You look outside, you see a little sun, but there's also some clouds. Now those clouds will deliver some rain, showers, and thunderstorms. But the big thing, we're tracking the wind and the storms. Coming up in Utah's most accurate forecast. You're watching ABC4 News. You're watching ABC4 News. And welcome back. The U.S. Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, announced this year's Blue Ribbon Schools, and four Utah schools are on that list. Let me tell you which ones. The four schools honored here in Utah are Crimson View Elementary in St. George, Juan Diego Catholic High School in Draper, McMillan Elementary in Murray, and Northridge Elementary in Lake Town. Now, they qualify based on test scores and on the progress they've made in closing achievement gaps. It's a great representation, I think, for a lot of educators and people that do 
great things and and to be recognized yeah. is <laughs> the, above and beyond what we ever expect as well. Oh, that is so nice to be recognized. Well, 362 schools were honored this year in 46 states. The principals of these schools will be honored in D.C. in November. Well, Blue Ribbon Schools and a Blue Ribbon State for Teachers. Utah has made a list of the top schools for teachers. Wallet Hub compared states based on teachers' friendliness, looking at things like teachers' income potential, safety, and student-to-teacher ratio. Utah came in number nine. The top three were North Dakota, New Jersey, and Pennsylvania. Well, rent prices in Salt Lake City have dropped 0.3% over the past month. The current median rent for one-bedroom apartment still around about $870 a month, while a two-bedroom could run just under $1,100 a month. Although rent in Salt Lake City rose slightly in the past year, Salt Lake is still more affordable than many large cities nationwide. And the CPSC is also warning consumers about a crowbar recall. We want to tell you about this is specifically a 145,000, the DeWalt multifunctional utility bar. Well, apparently the utility bar can break while being used for prying, which can lead to serious injuries, you can imagine. If you have this crowbar, contact DeWalt for what steps you need to take. And a second deadly outbreak of Legionnaire's disease hits the United States in as many months. This outbreak appeared to link to water rights at a state fair in North Carolina. CNN's Britt Conway explores the increase in cases. Legionnaire's disease is on the rise. The CDC says the rate has increased 550% since 2000. And it could be worse than we know. This is probably an underestimate because this is a little bit of a difficult disease to diagnose. The disease is a serious lung infection caused by the Legionella bacteria, typically found in warm, fresh water like hot tubs, hot water tanks, and decorative fountains. It can also be found in shower heads and plumbing systems in large buildings. So what's causing the increase in cases? I think it's, it's largely because of increased recognition. That in combination with a potentially increased number of cases in complex plumbing. In buildings where the plumbing is uh, neglected. Symptoms can include severe coughing, muscle aches, fever, shortness of breath, and headaches. It typically can be treated with antibiotics, but people over the age of 50, those with weakened lungs or a weakened immune system, are at a greater risk. For today's Health Minute, I'm Britt Conway. And thank you, Brett. Well, according to the 2015 CDC report, about one in 10 people infected with Legionnaires dies. Time now for Utah's most accurate forecast with Dan Pope, weather rate certified eight years in a row. All right, we've been hearing about this storm that's coming, but we might not be as strong as we once thought for Salt Lake at least. For Salt Lake City, because okay. it's tracking just a little bit north, but places like Montana, an historic blizzard is setting Ooh. up. Great Falls to Glasgow and over towards the uh, area near G G Glacier National Park. I mean, look at that zone of one to two feet or more, maybe up to 45 inches of snow around St. Mary and some of the passes near Glacier National Park. So this area gets the historic snowfall. To the south, there will be a little snow, but it'll be more spotty and not nearly as heavy. But notice some of the heavy snow gets into Yellowstone Park. So if you were thinking of heading in that direction, <laughs> plan on some winter weather. Lake Mountain, we're beginning to see the clouds darken up. And also on radar, we're starting to see a few showers out towards Nevada. These showers, as you'll see here, coming in and along a stationary cold front that's sitting right over northern Utah. Look at those showers right there. Uh, possibility of a little sprinkle or two here this evening in northern Utah, but later on a higher chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms. Here about 11 p.m. near Nephi and Price. Steady light precipitation along the Idaho-Utah border. A thunder shower near Elko. This is midnight. Notice this heads over towards Vernal. Passes through Vernal. A new area develops, Duchesne to Provo by 4 a.m. We start the morning off fairly quiet, but showers develop in the midday continue into the late afternoon and then become kind of strong. But you can see the heaviest precipitation goes from Wendover to Logan. So uh, those games from Ogden to Logan, football games, are going to be a little bit questionable as far as how much rain you'll get. Now, very strong southerly winds ahead of the front. Winds shift to the northwest behind the front. We'll see 
a little less of a storm coming through on Sunday. Probably not as big as we had earlier thought. Certainly it will be gusty and also showery, but Sunday may not be a complete washout, nor will Saturday. Now there's your forecast for Monday, early in the day. Here's what I mean. 0.07 in Salt Lake, 0.01 Sandy, 0.02 Lehigh, but you get up to, to Ogden, 0.8, and over an inch in Logan. And how about Park Valley, 3.3 in Snowville, 2.5. That's the big part of the storm going to the north. So the weekend weather with that front coming in, definitely going to be the thing we're watching very carefully. Windy is the weather word, okay? So windy and turning colder, but not a lot colder. Just 70s for highs and 40s and 50s for lows in southern Utah. And along the Wasatch Front, we'll push the chance for a shower or thunderstorm tomorrow. And then rain for a while on Sunday. Snow levels down to about 5,000, 5,500 feet, just the benches. Could be some freezing weather in colder spots along the Wasatch Front Sunday night. Monday night, Cache Valley for sure. Wasatch Mountain Valley is also cold. But next week looks really pretty nice. Yes, it does after this stretch of wet. Yeah, a little bit wind. of wet. And wind, wind. Oh, going to be a triple, quadruple hairspray day tomorrow. <laughs> and for all the sports going on this weekend, right? Will big, that play a factor? Big soccer game coming up on Sunday. Uh -huh. Huge one. And a legend is about to step away from the game that he loves. Coming up. We'll hear from RSL keeper Nick Romando as he gets ready to play his final home regular season game.